All children, except one, grow up. Today on a shoe and all, we're going to turn that lot into a fucking TV cabinet. This big elm beauty has finally chimed in and said I've got TV cabinet written all over me. Finally, after all these fucking years, this punky ass speaks up. I can fix its punky ass up later. But its lardy ass won't fit down the aisle of an airplane, so I'll need to make a plan which doesn't involve a messy fucking rat of sleddy thing in the jobby bob. You never get perfect paradise sides anyway, and I need it perfect for something later on. Come to punk. You funky mother I'm going to chime in here. You must play in the same face of each board the same amount of times. Then the grain will match up. Let us A. A. I'm not a big fan of this gear. It's basically super glue. The fumes that come off it are well out of order. I'm using it to seal the knots on this side because this side's going to see resin later. On the other side, to stop the resin spilling out, I'm going to use these 2K epoxy sticks. 2K means two parts. They're a flat colour, so the inside, they'll do to tidy things up. I wouldn't want that on a show face. That looks pretty janky in my opinion. They're an American brand called Mohawk, if you're interested. Do use gloves when mixing. Be warned, it goes hard in minutes. Ideally, you'd run these boards over the planer jointer, but um, they're too big, long, and heavy. The next best thing really is the track saw. Sake, Gary. That wasn't going too well because it wasn't zeroed out, so um, the grain match wasn't as beautiful as I hope. Nonetheless, you, can, you really can't see it. I'm using dominoes for one reason. I want perfect alignment after all of that work. Nothing else quite guarantees the grain will match up quite like the dominoes. But yeah, the edge grain is plenty strong enough without them. I don't want things moving about when it comes to clamp, clamps and glue either. The clamp on clamp action is for insurance. Clamping the board to the pipe clamps makes sure the boards don't bow under pressure, keeping it all nice and flat. Despite all of that, the proof is in the pudding, eh? Can you see that join? But was it for that pencil mark? One of these checks comes back to bite me on the arse later. I didn't do a dry run at all. If you've ever tried to get dominoes back out and punch yourself in the face, you know why. They're as tight as a duck's ass, watertight, impossible to get back out. I just need to be perfect. The dominoes need to be perfect. Everything needs to be perfect. This went wrong so many times, as you can see, and it just wasn't being perfect. It took a while to work out what was going wrong. The first go though, sending it together. Sent that check right through the board mid glue up. Yeah, that was a panic getting that apart. When you want to get on and need a fast curing glue, use PE glue. It's great in winter too because of the temperature and it will work at lower temperatures. Cleans up really easy too, leaving hardly any wet mist marks to sound out, which I love. But by that point I was like, fuck it, go home. I can see the bub from here. Fight. What might as well spot on I didn't mess with. The TS55 was the only one that seemed to cut perfectly, but the depth of cut was just a bit shy.
I found out I can't trust my digital gauge. But those things are so damn heavy, handy. I, I want to find one that I can trust. Oh, shit. not good. I left this in for one reason. Some peeps really like making table saw sleds, but making them with wood runners, one season they fit, the next season they're loose. Buy one of these aluminium runners that's just like the, the runner that's underneath your mitre square for your table saw with a little expansion washer type thingamajigs and you've never got a problem. You only need one per sled, by the way. I don't understand why people put two runners on the sled that just causes binding issues. Nonetheless, this wasn't gonna work with that ply. Finally, it all worked out. Well, till I saw this. For sake. Ah, oh, man. That's some heavy shit. Hey man, am I driving okay? I think we're parked, man. As I said before, super glue, it'll seal off the cavity and dries fast on, like if I was to paint a layer of res resin in, I'd have to wait 24 hours as well before I can pour any resin in there. This is pretty much, paint it on, it goes rock hard in seconds, you're done, ready to go. Got a pizza delivery for this sorority house. Did somebody order sausage? Wow, but the can to bounce, but the wagger got a bounce. that which board do you think i'm gonna find is the useful one out of that lot
If anyone has a better idea than this, a magnetic sort of sign stuff would be wonderful for that. Even though this board fits on my planer, we'll go through my planer, the advantage of ripping a board making the width smaller and then planing means less waste and more girth fellas. I'll try and explain. So you see the board is wavy as f If you're wondering what thickness you'll roughly get when you've planed it, just draw these lines from one side to the other. If you rip it down this high point, that's hopefully running down the length of the board like this is, you'll see a dramatic difference in girth. I don't know why I keep saying girth. But like I did before, you'll need to plane the show face equal amounts to get a good, good grain match and glue line. That looks pretty much like it didn't happen. Now remember I didn't have a design in mind, so to speak. I just had the wood in front of me and uh, was making up as a went along. What I was thinking here was I needed to add some texture. Somehow I needed to marry the oak and the elm together so it wasn't noticeable or it just looked like it was meant to be somehow. So I'm cutting all this waning edge off thinking I'm going to use it for the doors or the sides somehow because that elm board wasn't long enough either to waterfall right down to the floor so it needed lifting up as well so it could co accommodate everything else. I wanted to go into this cabinet and um, I cracked on with that. Wasn't uh, There wasn't a light bulb moment where I went yeah that that's definitely right, that's what I want to do either, so um, I slept on this one. The reason I'm using these Festal Domino connectors, this whole thing is going to be solid wood. So it's going to be bloody heavy at the end of it. And I needed to transport it from the workshop to my flat on my own. So I needed to have it, I needed to be able to come apart easily. If you think something like that on your own, you're going to damage it, aren't you? It wasn't really doing it for me. I definitely didn't make my nuts tighten and somehow I need to make up the height of that cabinet. I tried wire brushing the oak. Oak's all I had in there in the shop. I tried burning it and staining it, wire brushing it. Quite like that though. Again, procrastinate overnight, have a beer and think about it. My thinking with the base was to mirror the top's rainy edge shape and sculpt the doors or drawers to correspond with that shape. I procrastinated for weeks over this. Should it be drawers? Should it be doors? Shelves? And because I had no design, when I was gluing this lot up, I didn't think of all of this. Doing drawings and planning, etc., for me meant it just wouldn't ever come to fruition. I don't get much sleep because my brain never stops. It'll be a never ending story if I let it go that way. So I fly by the seat of my pants on anything I design and make it up as I go along. That sliver I ripped off, squaring it up. Even with it, I was still shy of what I needed. That tape you see there, the reason for that tape is to show me the show face, just as a reminder for any absent minded 
moments, you know, when you're gluing up, for instance, and you pick the wrong side and you lose your face side. The dominoes, again, just to give me perfect alignment. I didn't want to have to play in the faces parallel or, you know, sand a ridge out at that stage. I don't normally use this brand of polyurethane glue. I couldn't get my hands on the, my normal brand. This failed me twice in, the, in this build. I've no idea why. You can clearly see the joint wasn't starved for glue. I wasn't about to do it again either. If you ever have to do this, make sure you wipe your hose straight away after. It's a tosser to clean up and dry. On with the H-shaped centre section. Got this dado blade in a track saw jobby for this. I have done a video on it if you want to know more. You could use a router instead. I prefer this as it's shimmed at 0.5 increments. You could do it by hand if you really fancied it. Don't bother with your not safe comments because I pulled the saw back still running. I knew what I was doing. My shoulder arm were locked. That saw isn't capable of pushing the weight of me around. Not only that, I made sure when I pulled the saw back that I didn't put any twist into how I was holding, holding it when I was pulling it back thus obviously creating a kickback. Main advantage of doing this is that it cleans up the cut beautifully. Again, save your breath. I find moving the fence about to really dial this in problematic. This works every time and finishes off the cut without me risking cutting into my shoulder. Anyway, I still managed to screw this up. I'm not checking for the right depth of cut here. I'm using it to cut whatever waste is left at the bottom. I'm just being too lazy to get the router plane out. You may have guessed by now I don't see tools are made to do one job. I see them doing whatever purpose I can use them for, basically. Even it means they get abused. Tools are tools to me, really. Workhorses.
shocking scenes of what not to do on the table saw. It's not really advisable to cut pieces that are wider than it's long, but as you can see I'm holding the top and the bottom of the wood to stop it going into a twist, plus arrive enough and a crown guard. The worst that's going to happen is some burning of the end grain, but it was a mistake not to use both hands here. It's no big deal though, it's not going to be on show those burn marks is it? Quick thank you to Dickie for sorting these out. You bloody lifesaver. I only need six of them. I wasn't wanting to spunk 100 quid on a whole box of them. I seldom use them. However, I did manage to screw these up. How you may ask, the usual way, measuring. I should have just marked it out from the beginning. Re you know, relative measurement with everything in situation. Not measured things. And measuring, sorry, is usually where it always goes wrong. Not gonna lie though, I had to find a friend to find that <laughs> to remove them. Because I only had six. First off with a screwdriver that's small enough to miss the threads, but the right side to hit the nut inside downwards, which kind of releases it a bit. Then you should be able to leave them out carefully. Don't be a JCB about it though.
As I'm going to change the colour of the base, I used masking tape because any glue sinking into the wood will make the colour change tonally very different. I see people use wet rags too. Don't ever do that. You're just watering down the glue and it just seeps deeper into the wood, making it impossible to sand out. This is beginning to sound like King Oscars. I wanted to say a big thank you to Dean for helping with uh, camera stuff. I've been learning a new camera, well, learning how to use a camera properly. Over the last few months, he's been putting it into all layman's terms for me. Without him, this would have taken a lot, lot longer. Big cheers to you, mate. Hope you're well. Guess where I needed to drill for a shelf pin. What is it they say? Things happen in threes. The tenon wasn't completely seated. Possibly the glue wasn't able to escape, which was lifting it slightly. I'm not sure. That sent it out all out of whack. I was asked why I used a shoulder plane and not a normal plane. At that height, on the, you know, with everything on the bench, a standard plane would have been a bit, little bit too awkward to handle. This was just easier to control. Woodworking is more about the ability to solve and hide mistakes than anything. Perfection isn't achievable. Go have a look at some Chippendale furniture close up. You'll feel way better about your dovetail in comparison to theirs. Picture you upon my knee Take me for two and two for tea Just me for you and you for me uh, no. I've had mixed results fuming an ageing wood. It's all relative to the amount of tannin in the wood. French iron seems to have very little, so I'm not taking any chances here, as the process can take a week to do, so I really want to get this done in, in one go. This also speeds up the process. Doing this will give you the look of an old church pew. I properly lucked out here. I hadn't noticed that I'd left some glue behind, and the results would have been really sh if I'd gone ahead and not seen that. It would effectively have worked as a barrier to the amount of fumes, and uh, would just stay the colour that it's protecting as it were. I knew it as I walked into the barn to fume this piece. It was spitting with rain at the time. Didn't bother to wipe it down. Remember that the tannin tea was water-based. Droplets of rain watered down the colouring, the coating of, of the tea. And this is the result. Fucking shame, because I'm not going to lie, that looks fucking beautiful. Just look at all those colours going on in there. I had two choices, sand it back and send it again, or sand it back and send it again. Well, that's what I thought at the time. I sanded it back to the point where the spots weren't visible, and then hit it all again. 
again with a tannin tea. I to let that dry. If you've ever done this before, you'll know that it takes a few days, possibly a week, for the fumes of the ammonia to die off from whatever it is you've fumed. This actually worked in my favour because when, it came, when I came back, it looked like it all happened without me going through the whole process again, simply because of the fumes coming off of the wood. Happy days. Next was time to get on with the boring part, and that's the toe kick. We really never going to see this, but I still wanted to add that Q and all touch to it. Again, using oak, pretty sure this is French oak from the smell, and it's really boring grain. So even more reason to turn on the charm. So I hit it with a wire brush to give it some texture, removing that softer part of the wood and also some black Indian ink. You may be wondering about the choice of colours. Well, you just need to go and buy a new iMac or go and have a look at a new iMac to see the issue. White bezels around a screen is fucking stupid. Same deal here. The TV cabinet, in my opinion, should also be dark coloured, hence why the majority of this is dark. Even though the carcass looked nice, as it is with all that figured grain. When it's all put in place with speakers, lamps, rug, TV, coffee table and all that, it's just gonna look too busy. But in my own way, though, I added some details like Easter eggs to find, such as these rear panels. I chose these napkins because they had my favourite flower on them, poppies. No, re no relation to what comes from them or anything. They're three ply, so two layers needed to be removed before I cracked on with this. Why pink? Why not? Pink works nice with brown, and I've no problem using pink as a fella.
everything in the end was finished with Osmo Poly X. This is, that's just a hard wax oil. I've never had any issues with it. In fact, I left a cold drink on my coffee table one night. When going to bed, moved the glass to see a, a nice ring stain. I went to bed so f it, deal with it in the morning, do it the next day. The next day, it wasn't there. It's like nothing had happened. So I've stuck with Osmo. Unless someone, unless someone sends me another brand to test, I'm not gonna risk trying anything else. I utterly hated this gash aluminium track. It just stuck out like a sore thumb. Yeah. Sliding doors were the best answer to me. I don't have a lot of room in my living room and doors opening into the room would have made me hopping over them to get to the inside and move it and you know and moving the coffee table. I don't know about you, but when someone says to me enamel, I think of that very tough, durable coating on sinks. So I picked this paint, which was nothing like an animal. Enamel. It's as bad as that crap from Farrell and Ball. I didn't fancy making sliding doors without the proper rails. In my experience, a natural wood slide can bind from season to season. Just can't bother to deal with that. This show in front of you is pretty much just because I didn't spend any time planning this out. You know, drawers, doors, shelves, whatever. Let us A. A. The shelves themselves, they were only going to be seen when the doors opened up. I really felt it would be nice to keep them as natural looking as possible. I picked these two boards, which are in sequence in the logs, so one being the next one up in the log. So kind of mirror matched in the grain pattern. The knots needed some attention though, as they were the star of the show in my opinion. I wanted them to be the first thing you saw when you opened up the doors, and that to be the same on both sides. Mirrored, I guess you could say. I used Osmo Raw. raw. Now I wish I did because of the white pigment. I really wanted the wood to look exactly the same as it did before any finish was applied, you know, but protected. This seems to be the holy grail, the Ark of the Covenant, so to speak. A finish that protects but doesn't look like it's been applied. Don't get me wrong, on something like ash or holly, this would work, and it would work a treat. This was my only thing I regretted in the whole build, though. The doors, I think I'm just going to call this project the procrastination. At least a week of procrastinating on them. I was going to make them one solid lump each side, trouble as they would have been heavy, and flat looking in colour, which wasn't making my nuts tighten. I came up with this in the end. It meant using less wood, less weight and some texture. It was a very tedious glue up though. It was like pulling teeth, section by section. Nuts tightened. PU glue for this is perfect when it's only five minutes set time. The chosen door slides meant for a huge gap between the doors and the carcass, like 10 mil or something, maybe even 15 mil. I was like, that, I, there's no way. It, it comes down to cleaning as well. I don't want dust getting there very easily. So that's why I'm setting the parts into the wood to give me about a two mil gap. A quick plug, not sponsored at all. This router is hands down the best quarter inch fixed plunge based router on the market in my opinion. Ergonomically, it's very comfortable. It just feels, it really just feels right to hands. The knob to raise and lower the router works like it's part of you, instinctive as it were. Hope that makes sense. In short, this is over my little Festal 1010 router. For any freehand work, nothing comes close to this and there's a little light that shows you the way. Luckily for me, my brother took this off my hands, so I still get to use it. I do need to replace this.
was here when he knew he had f***ed up. Right then and there, I probably regretted selling my electric planer. That's a lot to remove by hand. It was a nice workout. I couldn't wipe me up the next day. Now that sound is usually very clean, but I couldn't hear the vac saying I'm full, dickhead. I wanted the doors the same colour as the carcass. When I was sawing up the wood for the doors, you've got different oaks mixed up here. I said to myself, nah, she'll be all right, she'll be fine. This is more of a train smash than you know. I can't really sand it all back, can I? I'd be left with really dark, obvious lines in the corners. My first port of call for me was to hit it with some stain and try and get it all to match. Well, that went badly. I lost all depth of colour, like the carcass has, and made for a very flat colour, which I hated. Next choice was to start over again, or throw the toys off home and sleep on it. I slept on it, and while I was dropping the kiddies off of the pool that morning, I came up with this idea. It sold everything. Just sanding the faces and working on it on just them broke up that flat colour. I made my own mix of stain to match the colours of the carcass and applied them in two stages. The light reddish mix first and then a dark walnut. Cautiously with a dark walnut, more like a coat though. But this also solved another problem. There was one problem that was properly breaking my heart at the time. The depth of the cabinet meant I had to plane the fins of the doors to the point where they were being flat, which took away my texture. I had that line from aliens going through my head. To do. I really didn't see this ending well at the time. Well, someone was looking down on me, I guess. I can guess who. I can hear him saying, don't worry about it, son. But it worked out pretty sweet in the end. Miss you, thank you. If you enjoy my content and fancy supporting my channel, that would be wonderful. We get a call from YouTube ad revenue these days, so please use the Patreon link below, not the YouTube membership, as they take 30% of that, which isn't cool. Till we meet again, be lucky. I am so proud of you mother suckers. Here, here.